A few months ago, Judy was babysitting a little boy who was about two or three months old. He was the child of our next door neighbors. I was holding him when he began to be fussy and she said it was time for his bottle. When she prepared that and he got hold of it, he sucked on that like he was starving. Now with that in mind, listen to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. And he adds in verse 3, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. We're supposed to desire the word like a baby desires milk. I must stop and ask myself, do I do that? There are several copies of the Bible around the house. Do I want to open those and get into the word like that baby desired that milk that day when we were babysitting? Notice also the association in verse three with tasting that the Lord is good. I think if I'd been writing that, I would have used a word like now that you understand or now that you see something pretty intellectual. I think there are two possibilities. It may be just an association between the milk and taste, or it may be that Jesus so fulfills all of our senses and all of our being that we need a an artsy word like taste, tasted that the Lord is good. Peter seems to be concerned about growth. He says here that we grow thereby. In Second Peter chapter one, he lists what we call the Christian graces. And then he says, if you have these in ever increasing measure, they'll keep you from being barren and unfruitful. Go to the last verse that we have from Peter's pen. Second Peter chapter three, verse 18 says, grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Am I growing? We understand the need for growth when we're talking about our bank accounts. We want our flowers to grow. We want our businesses to grow. We want our churches to grow. Shouldn't the Lord be concerned about our growth, our spiritual growth? And Peter tells us how to grow. The word. Get in the word. And I fear that there are Christians who only open their Bibles on Sunday morning and maybe Wednesday night. And even if they have a good Bible class and a good Bible sermon that day, that's not enough. But rather than focusing on our failures, let me point to a couple of good examples for us. When I was preaching at the Legacy Church of Christ, Kent Robinson was an elder. He was retired from construction and therefore he would come around the building and do different projects. On several different times, he would come in and say, staff, why don't you all all go out to lunch together and I'll stay and watch the phone. We gladly took him up on that. And every time when we came back, he would be sitting at that front desk reading the Bible moved to King David from the scriptures in his 119th Psalm, that 176 verse long Psalm. See verse 11. Thy word have I stored up in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. The famous 105. That verse says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and the light into my path. Come into the New Testament, and I think of the Apostle Paul telling Timothy to bring his coat to him. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Evidently, it was cold in that prison, but then he says, and most important, bring the parchments. He wanted to keep studying even when death was staring him in the face. Today, I hope that we'll follow these great men who enjoyed, who longed for the study of God's word. I hope you're hungry. In fact, today, I hope you have an insatiable appetite for the word of God.